Hey guys, so this is going to be part two of my practice for the FLW Toyota Series event on Sam Rayburn. Um, part one, if you haven't watched it already, um, I pretty much have decided that I'm going to stay in one specific area on the lake instead of trying to just run all over the lake because I mean I had really not fished the lake very much before. I'd had like one day that I'd been to Rayburn before and at a different time of year and everything. So. I fished, you know, practices for pretty much like a day in a different part of the lake and ended up picking a different area that I was just going to practice the majority of the time on, or if not all the rest of my time on. So going into there, I found a, I guess, a decent bite from what I could tell. Definitely there were some big ones in this area. So I felt pretty confident just trying my best to break it down as much as I could. <clears throat> Excuse me. But, um, so after that pretty much my plan was to break down that area as much as i possibly could so what i'm doing in this part of the practice so this is i think like the i'd been there for about a day and a half this is like the third day that i'm there i've pretty much decided that i'm gonna keep breaking down this area so i i think i might have mentioned it in the last video but there was a lot of fish like just randomly in the grass even just beside the grass you know out in the wide open just fish that they would bust you know chasing bait and everything out there i could you know i had some just blown up right by my boat so i was kind of just wanting to see and use up a day in that area since i was pretty much told myself i was going to focus on that area anyway see if there was any way that i could actually catch those fish um you know a lot of times if you got fish like that maybe you can go around you know tossing a jerk bait around by the grass or something or or just like a, a little uh, popper or something. So that's what I was doing. I kinda just spent a day running around, you know, sampling different little baits, little swim baits and stuff like that to see if I could trigger some of those fish that were schooling on some of those, that bait out, you know, over some of the main lake stuff that was out there in the middle and that were, you know, swimming around by the grass and, and stuff like that. But they were keyed in on these little bitty, like just tiny, tiny bait that I was having a pretty tough time replicating and tricking them into biting. So it ended up being uh, a little bit of a waste of a day, I think. Um, or Well, I mean, I got it out of my head, but I'll show you some of the footage from it. I caught some fish doing it, but it was not consistent at all. I mean, not anything. I was kind of just wanting to figure out if there was any way that if the opportunity presented itself while I was going down the bank or something like that, something that I could toss out that I felt like I could, you know, trick that one into biting it, which I did narrow it down. I, I felt like I was catching some uh, on a, a little jerk bait and I was catching a few on a little popper, you know, that I, if I just work it really slow every now and then I could trick one in, but most of them were pretty small ones. But we'll get to that footage in a second and I'll kind of explain it as we go here. But if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel, like the video, leave a comment, let me know what you think about it. And uh, I'm gonna be posting my tournament video after this one. Um, I think I'm probably going to split it up in, in the days instead of uh, just doing it all at once. But anyway, if you haven't ever watched any of my tournament videos, a lot of them I do, you know, kind of breakdowns with map chips and things like that. So this one, I think I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go in and probably have some segments where I'll show you guys like on a map chip what going into this area and, and different areas on the lake, what I actually was looking for for areas that I was going to target where I was finding out that bass were congregated in you know bigger numbers in and places that i could focus on but anyway we're going to get along with the video here subscribe to my channel and uh continue watching hope you guys enjoy it
All right, so as you guys saw, that last day was kind of a tough day of practice for me. Um, I actually went over and sampled uh, some areas, I think it's in Caney, uh, that I was in, and I just really was kind of looking around. Because I was practicing on one side of the lake, um, say like tournament comes around one of the days and I've got a day where the wind just, I mean, kills that area or the majority of it or, or something happens. You know, I wanted at least just a little bit of something after the that day seemed like it was going south. So I ran over there real quick and, and fished for just like a few hours in the afternoon. I, I, I'm probably, probably not even a few hours, but um, anyway, the next day, what I'm doing is I actually decided to check some of the offshore stuff a little bit more um, still to this point um, I haven't gotten a keeper bite before like 10 30 10 30 or 11 I think the first day um, I got a good keeper bite at like 10 30 or something like that but um, yeah the mornings have just been terrible for me so I went out and I decided to try some stuff um, in the morning I guess and just you know different things a little bit but I wanted to see if I could get some better bites uh, dragging like a Carolina rig around maybe a jig things like that you know just out, out a little bit more offshore because I've been focusing on the shallow stuff a lot so starting out the day um, I did some deeper stuff um, I ran around quite a bit uh, throwing a chatterbait around too just sampling some different stuff. I still was kind of wanting to lay off of the frog fishing and the flipping because I really didn't want to just wear that stuff out because I was limited to a smaller area. But again, I'm still wanting to stay on the bite that I wanted to fish in the tournament, which I felt like the strongest bite that I could go with was going to be to punch the grass and throw a frog in the pads. I, I was thinking that that was probably what I was going to end up doing anyway. But if I could find something better, more can, you know, really consistent that I was getting a lot of bites on it, this was my time to sample everything else in that area because I already felt like I was building some confidence in that area. But you'll see after I do some other things, I also go and punch some grass some. So if you're, when you're, or when you're watching this, um, you might get the perception that I went out and I was running around beating up that area. I was not actually doing that. Um, I actually only punched the grass for maybe like 20 minutes, something like that. Um, because I had yet to, in that area, I had punched a little bit, but I wasn't getting like some quality bites in there, which I really hadn't spent more than like five minutes punching the grass in there. But, um, it was one of those things going into the tournament, I just, it, and maybe, you know, a lot of people wouldn't even touch the area. I needed something to just like tell them, give me some more confidence because as you're working up the tournament, you're talking about days that things can be switching, you know, and you might come out in the tournament and get blindsided that the entire time you haven't been following the bite. So just for me, I had to flip for a little bit. So you'll see, I, I flipped up a pretty good one and, you know, could I have not flipped until the tournament? Yeah, but I had a lot of areas and I was still trying to hone down where I thought the fish were in the grass. So like specific areas that in the tournament I could just boom, 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 hit those whenever the, like whenever the bite got really hot and I could, and I felt like the fish were biting good in the grass. Some areas that I could just hit real quick where I knew they were, they were a concentrated small area that I could hit really fast and get the bites that I needed. So yeah, and I probably should have not had a hook on. I probably should have had just like a dummy bait or something, but I still was kind of wanting to justify the size was there in my head, which was probably not the smartest thing, but I did it anyway. You know, the, you know, hindsight's 2020, but anyway, we'll get on to the next day so you guys can see how this goes down.
I neglected the flip for like way too long, I guess, because kind of decided just to dedicate a few hours to go flipping around and starting to catch them again. So I don't know. I think it's definitely a time of the day thing too, but take five of those for sure. Five pounder just followed the spot up. So after that day of practice, pretty much what I had to do the last day, or at least what I had going on in my head is that I still had not gotten a bite, a keeper bite before 10.30 in the morning. And I didn't know the next day I was pretty, I guess, locked in that I was at least going to start out punching or throwing a frog. And I didn't quite know if it, you know, if the punching was just going to be the middle of the day thing or if I really could rely on that maybe to get a couple bonus bites in the morning or if maybe I just needed to focus on throwing a frog around until until midday rolled around when I felt like the punching bite was getting hot. So really what I did is and this is going to be kind of a short segment, <laughs> I went down there and I started punching because if I didn't catch them punching, then I was throwing a frog. So what I was looking for was a keeper bite. And if I got it, I was done and I was graphing brush for the rest of the day. Just, you know, for a backup plan 
for something to you know spend some time on throughout the tournament and thing to jump around that was close by so i got down there like two minutes flipped up a two pounder done so spent the rest of the day marking about every brush pile i could within a, a close radius of where i was going to be fishing and that was my final day of practice so going out in the tournament i at least knew that i could probably pick up some keepers in the morning if i locked down and started punching again most people probably be like why did you have a hook on but it's like in my head you know i need if i'm gonna go for something that i i'm getting five bites a day you know which maybe there's if you have more experience in that area um you would know better than that i don't know i don't know maybe it's uh, an inexperienced thing that i need to trust my gut a little bit more i don't know but yeah looking back i i would probably spend less time punching in there with a hook on but again those fish were moving around so much you know i i needed to know for myself that the, i was fishing for the right type of fish that were in there so that's what i was doing so here you go here's that big but it ain't bad All right, so now that you've seen that, um, I'll do a little bit of a review of kind of what I was throwing. Frog that I was tossing around was a Booyah Pad Crasher. Um, punching rig, I guess uh, similar to this, minus the skirt. Um, you know, just, I was throwing something pretty simple. There wasn't anything, you know, special about it, I guess, just green pumpkin uh ounce and a quarter punch and weight carolina rig i mean pretty simple uh just a cinco on the back of it green pumpkin also and uh yeah that was that was everything i was catching them on um next video coming out will be the tournament video day one you guys are good to see how this all worked out for me what went down 
you know, what I ended up catching uh, during the tournament. Pretty much going into this, I knew that I needed a really good bag to start out and keep catching good bags throughout the tournament because I had to move up in points in a bad way to make the championship because Fort Gibson didn't do me any favors. So stay tuned for that. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a like, leave a comment, and thanks for watching.